Bill Gates is the co-founder of Microsoft who changed the world by revolutionizing the way that we use computers. He went from dropping out of Harvard in order to become an entrepreneur to becoming one of the richest men on the planet with a net worth of $105 billion and one of the biggest philanthropists as well. Need motivation? Watch your top 10 with Believe Nation. Top 10, I got a top 10. Got my motivation high for my top 10. Gotta learn from the wise women and men. All my life, like nine. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael and I make these videos because you are probably the most ambitious person in your circle, but you know you're capable of more and you get that push by surrounding yourself with the best. So today let's learn from one of the best, Bill Gates and my take on his top 10 rules of success. Enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one, love what you do. Most people over the last 200 years or so, whoever they, the wealthiest person in the world was, didn't usually work that hard when they got to be 60 or so. They kind of took life easy. You seem to be working pretty hard. What motivates you to still work so hard? Well, I love my work. The work of the foundation is super interesting. I get to meet with the scientists. I get to go out in the field. I do think your habits are sort of set in your 20s and 30s. And by my standards of the 20s, you know, I didn't believe in weekends back then, uh, not to mention vacations. So I'm you know, fairly lazy compared to myself in my 20s, where I was a true uh, fanatic. Uh, you know, all I believed in was working on software night and day, and, and for my 20s, that was perfect. I didn't have a wife or family uh, at all, and my role was very hand, hands-on role. Rule number two, fight for acceptance. In the early days, um, you know, you were just a college dropout. You were very young looking. Did you get taken seriously by businessmen who are much older? For some people, that youth uh, and geekiness uh, was like, hey, should we trust them? You know, that's so weird. We've never seen something like that before. So yes, we had to fight for acceptance. I couldn't rent cars, uh, so I had to take cabs around because I was, too young and you know, probably some people were a little tough. But then as, as we got a little bit of success, people were fascinated by this deep belief we had in, in software. Rule number three, avoid the negative outlook. We think uh, that progress can actually accelerate. The last 15, last 15 years have been wonderful, but the next 15, uh, we can do more. Uh, and some people worry that when you, you talk about progress that it'll uh, reduce people's commitment to make things better. Uh, they think when you talk about progress that it shows you're naive and that maybe you don't realize uh, all those things that are left to be done and how horrific they are. Uh, and you know, so sometimes that purely that negative side of the story gets told, but you lose something very important uh, if you only look at it that way. Uh, you lose the optimism about what's possible and you lose the information where you look at the places that have done better than others and you understand what is it about delivery, innovation, partnerships, caring, what has come together uh, for the very best progress and then spread that uh, to the other places. Uh, that's what will help us drive at full speed. Rule number four, take calculated risks. Urgency that I felt that if we didn't get Microsoft going right away, that somebody uh, would do a great job building a software company, we won't have a chance. That probably ended up not being true, that I could have waited two or three years and the opportunity to do Microsoft still would be there. But anyway, I felt a sense of urgency. Uh, and you know, it's not like, you know, I still get to take courses and learn things um, today, you know, things like the learning company and there's all sorts of great books. So it's not like I've missed some part of my education. Right. When you dropped out, your father and mother said, are you sure you know what you want to do? If one of your children dropped out of college to start a company, what would you say? Well, I'd have to say yes, but uh, <laughs> the dropping out is not an irrevocable decision. Uh, right. You know, If you try and start a company that doesn't go well, they always let you go back. Right. Uh, and so if you don't have you know, kids that you need to uh, support, you know, it's a very low risk 
thing, particularly in the culture of the United States where trying to start something and, and failing is not a black mark for the rest of your life. Oh. Also, if you wanna have more confidence and learn from billionaires, check out my 254 series where every day for the next 254 days, I'll send you an awesome unlisted video to your email to help you shift your confidence forward. The links to join for free are in the description below. You really have to believe the internet's going to be mainstream. A lot of people are gonna get out there and use it. When you have the level of success that we've had, when you have a business that's important as this with this many competitors, you're going to have people saying some nasty things. If you ask people across the United States, is the future going to be better than the past? Most say no. Rule number five, swing for the fences. I feel like you always seem to swing for the fences in general. It's just sort of a new way of framing it. But I have to ask, if you are swinging for the fences, what if you miss? Well, hopefully uh, you get more than one swing. Is that fair? <laughs> yeah. uh, either at the same problem, like you know, multiple malaria vaccine constructs, so that you know, if you have two or three, the combined chance of success is much higher, or that you're working in multiple areas, not just one area. Right. You know, in climate, for example, I have a company that's uh, trying to make a nuclear reactor that would be very cheap and that would have safety, so that the public would be very accepting of it. Yeah. Now, you know, even I realize that's high risk, you know, less than 50% chance all that comes together. And yet, uh, it, if it did, and the only reason I'm involved is it would really help with climate, uh, let us generate electricity without any greenhouse gases. Rule number six, do volunteer work. Knowing that you're doing all this work, but someone in my position, I'm not a philanthropist, I don't necessarily have the means, how does someone like me or someone watching this help in the best way they can? Well, I wish more people could actually get to these countries, you know, uh, join the Peace Corps, spend time, even uh, just spending a few weeks there and see how great the needs are and see the progress. A lot of, uh, you know, volunteer work and the United States builds that sense of, okay, we care about other humans even you know, beyond our own uh, family group, even people had very different experiences. So you know, at a young age, a little bit of giving money away uh, you know, to form that habit and picking which things you really want to give to, including lots of things here in the US, and getting involved with volunteer time, those are the people uh, who I think will help kind of bring the world together and uh, you know avoid uh, just this divisiveness uh, that is is my greatest concern. Rule number seven: Use technology for your advantage. Historically, the newspapers or the the media were very responsible about not letting. Uh, untruths about vaccine safety get out there. Now, it's, you know, the, you don't want to get rid of the good thing, which is that anybody can publish. Right. The barriers to entry, the diversity of voices is so phenomenal compared to, to, to traditional publishing. Right. I feel like, and you have a bit of a YouTube presence, so you're able to share information about things uh, through social media. It's kind of a social media age, so I feel like that ideally helps your cause more than it hurts it. Yeah, my audience probably isn't uh, deep with the vaccine doubters, okay, uh, fair, but yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I in a creative way, uh, trying to get positive messages to uh, be interesting, and we have work to do on that. You know, I would have thought using experts and scientific knowledge that the all the internet would just make it so much easier to learn about things, uh, and yet in some ways. Uh, you know, people aren't seeking out complex information, particularly if it, it disagrees uh, with some preconceived notion that they have. So, you know, how can social media get out there and be a little bit of a uh, force for education, particularly on climate, where yeah. without a consensus, we won't do the, the hard things that will uh, save things for the next generation. Rule number eight, don't focus on one product. When you were starting Microsoft, there were a lot of other software companies and you were not number one at the beginning. I think there were others who were a little bit further ahead. What was it that enabled you to beat everybody else up in the software business? Was it 
Bill Gates? Was it something else? What was the unique factor that made you the most successful? Yeah, we were actually the first. And, but there were companies, uh, and they were all kind of single product companies, who got ahead of us uh, in terms of sales. Um, you know, by uh, about 1991, uh, we, we did become the largest uh, of all of them. We were an engineering company. We were about how you hire smart people and how you use tools to develop software broadly. We were global and we weren't about a single product. So like, for example, WordPerfect was a word processor, somebody might remember. Uh, they did so well with that product that their gross sales rivaled ours when we were doing a broad set of products. As soon as graphics interface caught on, which was Windows uh, that became mainstream in 1995, we became far larger than the other right. software companies. Now, subsequently, uh, you know, Google, Apple, uh, Amazon have become, uh, you know, also extremely right. successful. But in the 90s, we were the strongest uh, okay. by far. Rule number nine, focus on big numbers. The idea that you could get people to, to decide to support this foreign aid thing, which is a big deal uh, for our foundation, from a numeric point of view, we're still pushing that a little bit, but honestly, the story of the one child, you know, if you say to an audience, here's the picture of this child, shall we save this child? They're more engaged than if you said, hey, let's save a million children. You know, so there's definitely a sort of, you know, 10 to the six problem uh, here somewhere. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> that fascinating. Humans are not wired uh, to be, to, do that on a numeric basis. Um, and so, you know, that's why we have people like Bono and, and many others who come from a more storytelling world, yeah. and then they let me throw a few charts and numbers in just uh, <laughs> because I think uh, that that should, should be there. Once your heart tells you what direction to go in to prove that this is a, a very affordable, not, you know, not a big deal, well-managed path to, to be on. And rule number 10, the last one before a very special bonus clip, is build your relationships. In Microsoft, my early partner was Paul Allen, and then Steve Ballmer uh, was my partner. Now Melinda's uh, you know, even a totally equal partner in all the foundation work we're doing. So she, she and I run it together. It was so fascinating, I mean, the relationships we were building, learning all this new stuff, to have somebody to brainstorm with about it, uh, you know, made it a lot more fun. You know, things like writing letters together, giving speeches together, we had to learn how to bring out the best of the both of us in, in doing those things. But yeah, it was always you know clear we wanted to do it together. Now I've got a really special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy, but before that, if you're still here watching, I wanna celebrate you. If you commit to taking action after watching this video, we don't just watch videos, we do something about it. Give me a hashtag believe down in the comments as well. We had been working day and night. These were pretty maniacal days in terms of work was everything. Even, you know, I didn't believe in weekends or vacations. The team pretty broadly had worked super, super hard. The marketing people had figured out how to take this phenomena and, you know, get create a lot of excitement around it. If you want 10 more awesome rules from Bill Gates, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. This is a, a great time to be doing innovation because the tools of innovation are so much better. You know, I worked weekends, I didn't believe in vacation, and so I, 